Hi, my name is Judy and I'm the City Stitcher and welcome to my Floss Tube channel. Today is Sunday, July the 10th and for those of you that are in and around the greater Calgary area, happy stampeding to you. Uh, it is our 10 day stampede celebration that's going on right now, which will end next Sunday. Uh, yeah, so for those that, that you are stampeding, I hope you have a great time. Don't forget, be safe. Safety first, safety first, safety first. Um, and for those of you who are not in the greater Calgary area and are not stampeding, I hope you're having a really fantastic summer season. Have I explained to you that we are in slurpy season? It's very exciting for people like me, so trying to get my floss tube done and get it loaded and processing and all that kind of stuff so that I can go spend some quality time outside. Quite frankly, reading a book, listening to music and having a Slurpee, which is my ideal way to uh, spend some spend some of my summertime getting some vitamin D. Anyway, this is a channel about cross stitching and the stitching that I've done over the past week. and. Uh, for those of you who are new to my channel, thank you for stopping by and spending some time with me. And for those of you who are returning viewers, as always, you know I truly appreciate those of you who uh, come back and faithfully watch and keep up with what I'm working on. And from last week's video, let's... A um, couple of comments, questions, etc. Uh, so one, Shara, thank you so much. Uh, she said, I really love the technical terms that I, that I use. Yeah, I use my best technical terms. Eh, clearly is a technical term and I'm sure everyone understood that. Um, Girly uh, waded into, because I was commenting on the white Christmas sampler and me doing it on that green fabric, which is technically called teal. Um, and. Girlie, you're absolutely correct. I acknowledge that traditional hardanger, because there's hardanger at the bottom of that design, quite frankly, modified hardanger um, at the bottom of that design, and traditional hardanger is done white on white. And traditional hardanger and the way that it's traditionally used, I, I totally get the white on white, and I think it's great. I also like some of the other versions, um, the other color versions that people do. I have a friend who does a lot of hard anger and she uses all of the color combinations and she does beautiful work. But yes, I acknowledge that traditionally white on white. I just feel for that particular design, the white on white doesn't do the design justice, which is why I chose something else. But we'll talk a little bit more when we get there. But yeah, <laughs> I, I know, but anyway, it's... It's not so much that the hardanger was causing me a problem, it's the rest of the design. But anyway, uh, but thank, thank, you for, thank you for the comments. Um, and then there were several comments on the Velky Pataki. <laughs> I liked, uh, I had someone who kind of sent me a message and went, you have a Velky Pataki? <laughs> I'm like, yep, yep, I do. And I'm really glad I ordered it and I'm gonna make great use of it, which is awesome. And Zeb, I'm really happy that I enabled you. Um, it for me, it's a great little, it's a great little thing, particularly for Q snaps. Um, like I say, I haven't tried it on a few. But I'm I specifically got it for Q for traveling Q snap work, uh, which sounds a little bit ridiculous, but that's why I got it. Um, Rachel Q also commented that she's still searching for her perfect stitchy setup, and yep, it's a journey. It's a journey, and you have to find the tools that work for you. You know, clearly a Velky Pataki isn't going to do anything for someone who stitches in hand. Um, if you are working, like I say, if you're working on scroll frames and large scroll frames, like a Vel as far as I'm concerned, the Velky Pataki that I showed is not going to do anything for you. Um, you know, so you have to you have to find the tools that work for your particular situation. And there's all the discussion around which floor stands work with, um, like lazy boy recliners or other recliners or people who are working in sectionals and are having, you know, all that kind of stuff. There is a Facebook group. Um, I think it's called like cross stitching stands and frames which is a really great resource if you're looking for options. So I will put a link to that Facebook group in the notes section down below. 
because I'm I certainly have been in there periodically and it's because of them that I've gotten uh, some of the stands that I have and then Doxy Love Stitchers uh, asked me a question about what other kinds of stands that I have and it's a good so I'm gonna do a quick rundown of the stands that I have um, I have went I should probably do a video of the stands that I have but that's gonna take a little bit more setup um, but I'm hopefully gonna get to that in the next two or three weeks so stay tuned for that one my floor stands so I'm just looking around because because <laughs> I've been doing some weird things um, so in terms of the stands that I have so the Velky Bataki is the newest one I have a tabletop stand for larger scroll frames which I don't use very frequently um, I know why I, I know why I got it it's an okay stand I don't necessarily I don't necessarily love it it's okay um, and for the potential use where I thought how I thought I was going to use it it would probably work out okay again not not my favorite stand it's an okay stand um, I have a Hope lap stand. Um, I have a floor stand that I got from a guy down in the US who no longer makes stands, but I can show you what it looks like when I do my stand video. I will just tell you that you um, that particular version um, is no longer available. Um, but I think uh, Michael Hope, who does the Hope lap stand, I think he also does a floor stand, which may or may not be similar. I don't remember. Um, and then I have another floor stand. I actually think it's an Arabesca floor stand, to be perfectly honest, because uh, it did come from the Ukraine. Um, it's, yeah, it's just over there. <laughs> um, I, I like it. Uh, so I like my two floor stands. I like the fact that I have two floor stands. It's unusual that they're both sitting in this particular room at the moment. Um, part of the reason why I like having the two floor stands is because it lets me have a project set up both here in this stitching location as well as in my, um, I call this the summer stitching location and I also have the winter stitching location. And there still is a possibility that this room may get too cold in the evenings. Um, so I can always move, move back to the other location and have a stand there. I also have a floor stand that I got from my mother when she was handing off all of her stitching stash. Um, I, don't, I don't really use it. She got it uh, for some canvas work pieces that she was working on. Um, but when she was handing it over, she said, here's a stand. And I went great I'll take the stand I haven't actually used it um, it's one that would have come from like Michael's um, uh, if I could think of the name of it probably everybody would recognize what it was um, so I have it and one of these days again the project that she was the project that she was working on um, she didn't finish so she I got I got the unfinished project as well as the stand um, so whenever I get to working on that project um, I will I will try the stand out um, but again I don't feel like I need that particular stand for what I'm currently using because I have other stands and then I do have a K's creation stand um, which I got years and years and years ago I have not used it in years and years and years and years. Um, it's not that it's a bad stand, it's totally fine. It just doesn't necessarily work for the way that I do my stitching. And so I have a friend who laughs at me because she pretty much says, I make my projects do gymnastics while I'm stitching on them. <laughs> and there, there is a little bit of that. I actually was just thinking there was something I was working on where I even just recently actually took something that was square and put it on the on the diagonal and you know so like a case creation or a needlework four stand or a hard side creation none of those stands would you can't just suddenly put your project on a diagonal um, and it's kind of those gyrations in gymnastics which is why some of the other needlework stands don't necessarily work for me I like the ones where you can like for my other stands it's ones where you can actually just rest your project on the arms 
you can't see my hands so just rest your project on the arms and then you can just you know flip it over it's the sides are not connected to anything that's the kind of stand that I prefer but yes I think it would probably be helpful if people saw what I was talking about um, so watch for that in a coming video but thanks for the question all right those are the questions from last week let's get into my stitching I'm gonna tell you right now this is gonna be a long video and yeah by the time you click on it I know you'll know how long it is better than I do but it's gonna be a long because I see the pile all right let's get started let's start with the drawn thread sampler of stitches a series of nine charts uh, I'm doing this as a stitch along with Sarah the stitch and mommy with the goal is every two weeks that you get uh, one of the letters done which means by the end of the year the entire chart will be complete I am currently working on uh, M and an O and last week I was working on N and I did quite well So here is N complete, except for the necklace, which again, you stitch on, you need the beads, and I'm not gonna do the beads until the end. But there is all of N. Uh, and quite frankly, all of N is done because I just set that as a goal. I was getting to work on it, and um, actually it was last week the one where it took like forever. I think Sunday I didn't work on it because last week was the week that I was communing with you two. That reminds me, I forgot to go check and see the comments on the uh, the StitchCon bonus and the annex. Oh yeah, that's the that's the extravaganza. We'll talk about that in a bit. Anyway, when I finally got to working on this, I was like, I just wanted end done because I I I'm hoping that I'm going to have a little bit of travel occurring um, later this summer, so I just wanted to get a little ahead. And the calendar is just on the wrong side. Um, so I think last week was the week that I was supposed to start working on N, which means N wasn't supposed to be finished until um, this Sunday. And this Sunday I'm going to work on O, which is this one down here, which I'm going to have to adjust. Because I've changed my palette technically right now, this would turn into a dark green owl, which is, you know, not normal. So I'm going to make it a taupe owl, and I'm just, I need to figure out what this center color is going to be. So the taupe is going to be the outside, and I need to do something in here. It might be taupe as well. Who knows? Check back later. Um, but I'm going to work on O. And actually, I'm going to set the same goal this week. I'm going to try to get all of O finished this week. That's going to be my prime. I'm going to stitch that first. And once that goal is accomplished, because then I feel that I am a full two weeks of head of, ahead of schedule, which means if my late summer traveling plan comes to fruition, as I expect, I won't need to take this with me. Um, so that just, and I'll, I wouldn't need to take it with me as I was traveling and I would still be on track. Uh, for keeping up with the keeping up with the cell. So my goal for this week is actually to get all of O completed. The stitches in N um, were, I just have to turn around and remind myself, the stitches in N were pretty good. Um, as you can tell, I made my decision on doing, I followed through with my using the light for the five and the dark for the four on whatever that's, whatever that stitch is called. I've been very clear. I don't know the names of any of these stitches. I just follow a stitch diagram. The Norwich stitch, Norwick stitch, who knows? Anyway, I follow the diagram. I So I like this one. This one is the uh, net passing stitch. I actually quite liked how that one came out. That was using the Swap Perle. Uh, the New England laid stitch, which was worked up very quickly. And then this is the one that needs some, this is called the net filling stitch, which I'm gonna give you my commentary on that one um, because the diagram for that, 
it gives you the first part and then it says, you know, once, once you hit 50, uh, step 54, all you're going to do is repeat legs 7 to 54 until the design area is filled. And so the answer is you do the first 54 and then you go to 54 again and then you go to 54 again and then the instructions don't work. So then you have to go back and based on, you know, by then you sort of have a gist of how this is, how this is stitching, that you're sort of working your way down and then back up and down. It's sort of diagonally filling up. Um, but once you hit the second, so you do the first 54, then you do 7 to 54, 7 to 54, and then you have to go to the diagram on the main, on the main page for this particular series of three letters to get the ending part. So the ending part here closest to the L is not steps seven through anything. In fact, you're actually, it's, I had to figure it out myself. Um, but you're actually sort of working it the slightly the reverse way because you can't quite go back in the diagonals. But that part is not part of the instructions. You actually have to go back to the diagram and see how they've actually filled in that uh, far left far left parts of that particular stitch. So just a cautionary note, that's what I ended up doing. It's fine. Um, I just sort of got to the end and went, mm, it looks like, because quite frankly, it looks like a whole, like a whole, like the last triangle part of this, like, wouldn't have happened. And I was like, I don't think that's supposed to be blank. And of course, you know, because I've been following steps seven through 54. And then of course, as soon as I went, I don't think it's supposed to be blank, went to the main diagram, went, it's not supposed to be blank. And then I went and step seven through 54 isn't going to fill it in. Anyway. So just a cautionary note on that particular chart that you do need to go back to the main chart just to fill in that last little bit. It's not, it's not necessarily hard. You just kind of have to look at what you've got and go, okay, where are the parts? Because you've been working it on these diagonals, um, you kind of have to go back and look at that and go, what exactly do I need to fill in? And I had to go back sort of once I felt I had it filled in, sort of worked my way from left to right for a bit and went, no, no, I've got the right number of, of boxes in the right sizes. So, um, and surprisingly, I actually, so most of the places where the chart calls for Swa 103, I've been changing it over to Swa Dalje. In this one, I actually did use the SWA 103 because the, instru the instructions were saying you're going to do two passes for each leg. And so two passes with the SWA Delge was going to be too much. So I actually did it using the SWA 103. It worked out just fine. And again, I think the reason why SWA 103 is the right call for this stitch is because each, each step of that specialty stitch is done twice. So I think that's why the Swell 103 works there, whereas it d hasn't worked other places. Anyway, so I'm very happy with my N. N is done. This week's goal is to get O done so that I can be far, far enough ahead that I can stay on track, if that makes any sense. <laughs> I've just realized my setup is not centered. But anyway. All right, next up, uh, continued on a little bit with uh, the Victoria Sampler White Christmas. A 30-year-old chart. I was looking at it and um, I forgot to go back to their site, but I, I'm wondering if this was the third chart that they ever published. I will say the instructions in this one are a little bit funny. And we'll talk about that in just a second, but continued working on it. Uh, I'm still happy with my, I'm leaving all my stuff on Q-snaps. Um, still happy with my fabric choice. Because I, I think this darker background actually shows the design, whereas the white on white doesn't. So 
still happy with my choice. Still haven't cut off my bottom fabric and we'll sort that out at the end because <laughs> I've decided we're, I'm too far in now to bother cutting. Anyway, uh, so a couple of funny things. After last week's video and my big thing about, you know, I had to put the three, the three dots, I put in the three dots and I hated how it looked. Hated, 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 hated it because they're done with French knots and my French knots are okay, but anyway, I hated it. So I, so I decided I didn't want any of the dots. So I went from two on the chart to three was the correct, the correct one, technically correct version to zero. But of course, as soon as I took out the dots, I have a thing about symmetry. It's my own personal hang up. If you've watched me for any length of time, I do it to myself. I need it to be symmetrical and by removing the two dots now this entire thing was not going to be centered. <laughs> so I ripped it all out and moved it over so that it would be centered. Yeah. I know. Normal people would have said you're crazy, which is a totally acceptable response. And my answer is, yeah, but my piece, my way, my thoughts, my process. And by the way, I needed it centered. So I put it in, ripped it out, restitched it. When I was talking last week about using the A12, I also noticed that I was not very clear when I said that I, so the called for was DMC 317. The A12 that I used was not A12317 because I think that actually is available as an A12. I used the A12, A12 in white. So that's what I used here in place of the called for DMC317. I'm very happy with my choice. I continued on and did the four sided stitch. I did this. Um, herringbone stitch and this is where I say the instructions were hilarious. So both the four-sided stitch and this herringbone stitch the instructions said uh, in order to work these specialty stitches you needed to have your piece this way and that you would work your way up. Which I thought was hilarious. Um, I've stitched many a herringbone stitch. I've, n I've never had to stitch it this way. So the funny thing is the stitch diagrams in this particular chart in my version, which is a really, let's call it a 30 year old chart, have those instructions. I can assure you right now, I did not stitch it like this. <laughs> Quite frankly, all I did is I took the specialty instructions, which were like this and and turned them like this and went, okay, <laughs> now we've got them going the right way. Let's just stitch it. So I thought that was hilarious because um, I'm pretty sure if you went and looked on a more current version of uh, a Victoria sampler chart that it wouldn't, I don't think it would say that you had to turn your, your, your piece sideways to get the specialty stitch in. I haven't checked it, but I just, I looked at it and went, sorry, I have to do what? <laughs> and then I went, and I'm not doing that. Anyway, and the funny thing is, even though I've done a four-sided stitch and I know what it looks like, I still am the ridiculous person that says, I go to the stitch diagram and I follow the stitch diagram. I'm weird like that. Unless it's a Smyrna stitch and then sometimes I follow the stitch diagram and sometimes I do it my way because not all of your Smyrna stitch diagrams agree with each other. Anyway. Uh, so I got the four-sided stitch in, I got the herringbone stitch in, which is done with a Medici wool thread. And we'll talk about that in just a bit. And then I started working on this wreath, which is being stitched um, with two strands of Krynic Blending Filament 001 HL. And the HL, of course, uh, stands for high luster. So it's the really, really shiny. So in this, in this particular chart, you are using uh, blending filament 001, just regular, which was used up here in this, in this first row that you see, but the high luster is being used down here in the wreath. That wreath, man. Whew. So this is an example where, so I don't have this chart in Markup Arcs P for a couple of reasons. One, it's a hand-drawn chart. 
So I don't know that it would necessarily translate very well. And quite frankly, there's aspects of the chart um, where it sort of says, here's the first few and then there's an arrow, which is the, there's no way I'm gonna draw all of it out. <laughs> I've shown you the first few you can figure it out from there on and they do they give you the first few and then they say here's how the row ends um, which I again I think is hilarious because it's like start this way keep going until you get to here and then do this other thing sorry lost two itchy nose anyway so I have not put this in markup RxP because I don't think the hand-drawn symbols are going to work because they're hand-drawn they're not necessarily uniform there's a lot of specialty stitches, so I have not put this in Markup RxP. Thank heavens I do have a working copy of this because all of the back stitching in this wreath, I, uh, I started it and I went, I am having to use a highlighter so that every time I do a branch, I highlight the branch so that I know that I've done it. I'm actually, um, I tried doing it because I had this whole plan. It's like, if you just do this outside, come back around, then you can do the inside part. It would all work out. It's not working out. And so the answer is the default position is do a branch, highlight the branch, do a branch, highlight the branch. And you have to concentrate really, 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 really hard. Um, so I am about... A third probably not even a third just over a quarter a third is too far it's because I'm I'm looking at it it's on the stand I'm looking at going it I'm not a third I'm about a quarter so my goal is to finish spend the time doing this and I may have to do it in a in a couple of chunks so it's either gonna be one where it's like I'm gonna do a little bit and then work on something else and then do a bit more and work on something else and then finish it off or it's going to be one where I sit down and go, just get this done so you can move on. Check back later and see how I decide to work on that. Um, but I really want to get through that because um, I'm not going to do solve the problem out here. And again, the other parts of this wreath are French knots and beads. And I want to get the rest. I want to get the rest of this done so that I will then come back in and do French knots and do all of the beading personal preference um anyway I'm gonna because probably by the time I finish getting the the chronic blending filament I will be done with the wreath I will probably be mad at the wreath so it'll be best if I move on then I won't be mad at the wreath when I come back and again one of the interesting things I was looking at the instructions for this next band because it says down here is the village and quite frankly with the white on white I think it's really hard to see that it is a village and again, I think the contrast on this will actually make it a village. I think it's going to look lovely. So I'm very happy with my fabric choice. Uh, I did have a friend say, ooh, I would do it on navy. I'm like, navy and white, awesome combination. You know I'm all over that. But navy is not Christmassy for me. And this is called White Christmas. It says, dreaming of a white Christmas, it needs to be on green. As far as I'm concerned. <laughs> for me. Anyway. And it was interesting because I was, I, I am hoping to get this finished over the course of July. Eh, it might take me into August, check back later. But I am planning on doing um, a specific video when we get down here to this bottom one because I know that there are a lot of people that are really terrified of, of hard anger and cutting the threads and oh my goodness, what does that mean? And the answer is you shouldn't be worried about that. So I need to cut the threads uh, both. This is a pulled work um, specialty stitch as is that first band up here, um, as well as this one. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually try to do a video, um, get the rest of it done, and then do a video where I do the pull, um, show you how I cut the threads for this and how I cut the threads for this, um, just so that somebody can see it. Hopefully it will lessen some of the anxiety. Anyway, that's where I am on White Christmas. That wreath is going to slow me down. I didn't get as much accomplished on this this week because I got distracted by something else. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Okay, so the other piece that I worked on this week, you haven't seen for a while because um, it was July the 6th. This is French Country Crown by JBW Designs. 
This is the piece that I'm working as my Platinum Jubilee commemorative piece for me, for Queen Elizabeth II. Um, and I'm supposed to be working on it every sixth of the month. And my goal is to be finished, certainly, sort of the design by, I started it on February 6th, which was the day Queen Elizabeth became queen. Um, it's actually, sadly, the day of her father's passing, but that's how that works in a hereditary monarchy. Um, and I'm hoping by doing it um, one day a month, that by the time I hit uh, February 6th of next year, 2023, um, I will have all of this stitched. So I'm only working on it one day a month. You did not see it in June because June 6th, I was having a problem getting the packing ready for StitchCon. <laughs> so I for I didn't do the stitching on this piece because I needed to do StitchCon packing, which took precedence. So this time I hauled it out, I had to get caught up. Um, so, which I did. So here's how it's looking. I think it's coming along great. I'm doing this on a 28 count Navy Lugana using Mill Hill Beads 42010. If that's not correct, check in the notes below because it'll be correct in the notes, but I'm pretty sure it's 42010. It's starting to look like a crown. I think it's lovely. So I was supposed to get, because I, so this is in Markup ArcsP, which means I have all the, the data points. <laughs> So I'm, for once that are in Markup mark RxP, I'm turning into a total geek on the numbers, which it's my, uh, it's my profession. I've spent so much of my life living in the world of numbers. It's, um, I'm enjoying that part of Markup RxP more than I maybe should. Anyway, so I did the math because um, I'm on month five, so I needed to be at 41.7% to be on track with this. Now this piece doesn't necessarily divide up nicely into 12, so that's why I'm keeping track of it based in Markup RxP. So I finished off uh, my final length of thread, looked at my stats, and I was at 42.8, and I went, congratulations, you're on track, and stop. And really, that's what I'm doing. I'm taking a length of beading, uh, beading thread, and I'm stitching with it until it runs out, and then I look at my number and I go, not there yet, keep going, and then I do another length. And that's how I, I stitch until I hit the end of the length and call it a day. So when it worked out that it was 42.8, that was awesome. Because I was like, congratulations, you're on track. You're ready to put it away until August the 6th. So I'm happy with how this is coming along. I'm happy with how this is looking. I think it's going to look great at the end. So that is my crown piece. That clearly that one's off of the Q snap because it's going away until next month. All right. This is the unexpected start. So there are a number of um, people who said we should do a, a stitch con sal. This is the Sue Hillis uh, StitchCon exclusive. Now, just because you didn't go to StitchCon doesn't mean that you can't get the chart. I think you can get it. You just have to get it from Keepsakes. It's the only place that it's available. And so they uh, started this. Uh, this is. I'm going to stop and get a whole sentence pulled together. This is the chart that is being used for the StitchCon 2022 Sal that started on July the 1st. I did not start this on July the 1st. And in fact, I think when I showed this in my StitchCon haul, I went, who knows what year I'm going to stitch it in. And I love a, you know, a well-matured chart. And who knows what I said on that point in time. I watched, I've been watching on Instagram. People are, are stitching it. It's stitching up relatively quickly. And I went, I said to myself, I have to get this stitched in 2022. This has to become a finish. So yeah. Welcome to my great five-year master plan and changed. Not dramatically changed. We'll, I can talk about that in a minute as well. So I started it. Here's my start. Clearly, we all knew I was not going to be able to stitch this on a brown fabric. That wasn't going to happen. Hang on just a second.
And my plan to finish it is to put it into this box. I think originally I was thinking I was going to put it in this way, but believe it or not, I'm having a problem with that. Well, maybe it will work. It might still work this way. I was looking at it because the numbers, it's because of how, <laughs> the way the numbers inside the rulers go. I know it doesn't make any sense at all. I may still do it this way. Either way, it's going to go in this main section here. I am doing it on a 28 count uh, Ice Blue Lugana by Zweigart um, because I was looking for it to be very fulsome in this, in this square. So um, they talked in the chart itself, it says if you do it on 40 count over two or 20 count over one, it fits on this specific horn book by Stitch, etc. But of course, they also showed it in the box. I brought the box home. It's going in the box. And 40 count would just make it too small. Um, so I'm stitching it on a 28 count so that it will fill up the bulk of this bottom section here. I may need to do a little bit of background fabric, which will be totally fine um, just to fill in the rest of it. But the goal is to put it in there and then um, oh yeah, I know. I was, I was said to myself, I was like, I had a whole plan for what might fit in here. And then I completely lost the idea. And by the way, making this recording, it's just come back to me. I'll need to check the chart out and do the measurements and see if it fits, but it would be lovely if it did. Hmm. Check back later. More. So Getting it finished and fully finished into here is not my priority. Getting this stitched, fully stitched in 2022 is my priority. I've now decided that it has to be stitched in 2022. Anyway, so I got it started. Uh, so again, this took away some of my stitching time for White Christmas, just so I can get it started. Um, so I'm happy with where I'm at. It's I'm putting it down for a bit. Um, I've got some specific goals for this week that once I finish those goals, then I can come back and work on this. Um, but those goals come as a priority. Um, I've got other spots in the plan for 2022 where this can fit in to get worked up. And again, I, um, according to Markup RxP, anyway, let's see how many times I can say Markup RxP all in the same video. I've got this chart in Markup RxP. Um, technically, according to Markup RxP, it says I can have this finished in, and if I spent another five days stitching on it, it would be finished. So um, it is stitching up reasonably quickly, but I think that's, I've got a great start on that. Brace yourself. I have not changed any of the floss colors for this. I know, hard to believe. <laughs> I've changed the fabric because I can't do it on brown anyway. I will say this, um, I will say the light is washing it out. It is a, in person. It is more, a little more noticeably blue. Um, I had a couple of pieces of light blue fabric. I had an ice blue Jobelin and I had this ice blue Logan, Lugana. I had a catch up with a, a stitching friend of mine and said, opinions and she was um, she very strongly had an opinion and I was kind of like I can go either way and she said no no you need to use this one and here's why and I went sold <laughs> we're sold um, so 28 count ice blue Lugana see I even kept the heart didn't change it anyway I will say that back stitching again, another one. You had to you had to be very careful how you counted this. In fact, the, to the point where I was having to line some of it up to make sure I actually got it right. It probably wouldn't have screwed anything up if I had been off by a thread. But it's one of those ones where it's clearly this is not following the squares. So this back stitching alone. Um, I would say this is going to drive you to you need to do it on a linen or an even weave because you're going to need to do it over two to actually get a lot of the back stitching in 
for several of things because there are multiple spots um, where there's like curly Q things going on. You know, here and there and up here and anyway, just a side note. So that got started unexpectedly. And then of course, um, we got past the eighth um, I did my stitch con when I went, you've got a really healthy start on that. Time to stop that and get on with your cottage. So here is my, the July cottage of the month from Country Cottage Needleworks because I'm stitching these in the month that they are occurring. This is the one where I'm having to do a color conversion because this is very Americana. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that I'm Canadiana. All right, so here's where I got to on that one. And because I was feeling patriotic when I started it, I put my Jeanette Douglas uh, from her patriotic series. Um, this is her Zappy Dot. So I got started on the house. So I am using the called for aged pewter, which is actually the roof color, is going to be my house color. I'm going to keep the red and the white the same. The blue Beatrice, which is used, is the darker blue on here. My blue Beatrice looks more purpley than that. So I'm actually going to keep that. That's going to get used in the blue flowers down here. The July, I'm going to do as white with a red outline. I thought about doing it as red, but I used red for June and I didn't want to have another red one again. So I'm going to do it white with a red outline see how that looks and if I don't like it I'll rip it all out and then I will make it red <laughs> anyway the um the fireworks here we'll talk about that because I'm doing it to myself again and I'm gonna fix the I'm gonna fix the flag and make it Canadian to the point because I'm neurotic and math um, so I <laughs> actually I've legitimately looked up what the proportions of a Canadian flag are supposed to be so I can make it proportionate. I know the leaf is the hardest part, but the other parts I'm making accurate? Anyway, I know. Weird, but I'm doing. That's how I'm working on that. I'm actually really happy with the aged pewter for the house. I think I think that's coming like sort of a weathered cottage. I think it's great. So I'm very happy with that choice. I think the white and the red will look great with that. Fix the flag, keep the other things, we're off to the races. All right, and that is the stitching I've done this week. Stashquisitions, because I have some. Anyway, all right. Here's the thing that I was talking about. So I bought myself a skein of E130, DMC Light Effects, the cursed light effects that I used in Jerusalem that I was not happy with. Um, I have chosen to use that for July. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I'm a glutton for punishment and I do weird things. Anyway, um, so I'm using the D, I, my plan at this point is to use the DMC light effects E130 because it is this, oh, there you go. That's not bad. Because it's variegated, metallic, sparkly. And I'm, I said to myself, oh, that's better. That's going to be my fireworks. So we'll see, we'll see how it works out. I, if I don't like it, I'm going to stop. I'll only start one and make a decision and see whether it's going to be two. But I, I felt like there was enough. To me, I always think of, I don't think of fireworks as like necessarily being singular colors. Although we all know like you have your burst of pink and green and white and yellow and red and you know, whatever. Um, but I always think of my favorite are the ones where it's multiple colors. So anyway, so this is what I'm planning on using for the fireworks in the sky 
And again, I'm totally fine with that for July for a couple of reasons. One, because Canada Day is also in July, July the 1st, and we have fireworks for that. I also laugh because um, I live in Calgary um, and we have the stampede. We have fireworks that occur uh, for the stampede show every night. And the funny thing is I can hear them for, from where I am. And in fact, I'm thinking tonight that I'm actually going to walk. There's a, a viewing point uh, down over because I live on a hill sort of down over the city, um, I'm pretty sure that I'll be able to see the the Stampede fireworks if I just, so it's about a three minute walk. Um, so I think tonight I'm actually going to head out and just go watch the Stampede fireworks. It'll be, you know, 20 minutes standing on a point and watching. Anyway, so got that specifically for the July. Um, I also, um, I stopped in at a quilting shop because um, I, I was actually specifically looking for some fabric which they did not have, but they all happened to have um, sulky 12 weight in, they carry some sulky 12 weight. Now they only carry it in the big spool so I bought the big spool anyway. I was looking on Instagram, somebody stitched in ink circles as a monochromatic piece with this variegated thread and it was lovely 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 so it was in the ink circles group it was elemental dragons water and she chose sulky threads color 4016 and it was awesome and i went i must have that so they had it they only had it in the big spool and i went i don't care it stitches up fabulously very yet yeah, perfect i thought her choice for the elemental dragon water dragon was perfect so since I was in there I got it all right from embroidery marketplace um check back a few weeks ago I had placed an order she was out of one of the um silk threads that I had ordered from the chameleon line which is a South African line uh so that came in Actually, I was going to say, can you see a theme? Colors that I like together? Anyway, so that came in, so I picked that up. Um, as well, um, Embroidery Marketplace is having a 20% off um, in-stock Picture This Plus fabric. I don't know if it's all hand dyeds or just picture this plus. I got picture this plus, but it has to be in stock and she's got a separate category for that for pieces that are medium or large. It does not apply to the small pieces, so you have to be either buying a fat quarter or a um, fat half. I don't think she has yards, but I who knows? I didn't check those ones. Anyway, um, so your smallest size is, is a, that's applicable for the 20% discount is a fat quarter. And you know that's my preferred size generally anyway. So I went in there and looked at what she had in stock and went, okay, I'll take those. So I got myself a fat quarter of 32 count uh, Picture This Plus petals. Now again, this is going to blow out badly. I don't, I don't even know what to hold it against to... too far back. I don't have any, I don't think I have, oh, this might work. Let's try that. There you go. So it's a very, very, very pale pink. See, the camera just needed some contrast. Little, very, very slight modeling. Um, I have a plan for how this is going to get used. So that came home as well as a piece of 28 count spring Lugana. And quite frankly, I got this because I've got a couple of other um, Halloween pieces. So I did Halloween, that Cottage Garden Sampling Halloween one on, uh, I think it was 28 count poison apple from Color and Cotton, which I, I don't think I can get that anymore. But I have seen a, I do have a couple of other charts in my stash that are Halloween related that I think would go well on a bright green. She had it in stock. It 
had came with a 20% discount, it came home. The other thing that I got while I was there, because she's also got a category called discontinued. Uh, so the interesting thing with Krynik these days is um, sometimes they do discontinue colors. Sometimes, certainly in the current environment, there are a number of colors from their regular lineup which are not currently in the production. Um, so she had this color in her discontinued category. So whether or not it's actually discontinued or just not currently available. This is a light green Krynik number four cord, which is really in my color palette. Um, as soon as I saw the number, I went, ooh, that's me. So I, I picked it up. So those are my stash acquisitions for the week. Yes, there are other things on order. There will be more stash acquisitioning coming. Anyway. Uh, sorry, just, whoops. Need a bit of a beverage. I didn't bring my Slurpee out here. Slurpee's for as soon as I get this done and loading and processing. Out the balcony. All right. Okay, let's get on to the topic. Let's talk the Victoria Sampler. Um, so when I'm starting new designers, um, pieces that I didn't work on um, in, uh, so, okay, stop, full sentence, here we come. In 2021, I was picking a designer of the month, starting a design by that designer and showing the designer. Um, this year, it's not quite so designer focused, but as I'm bringing in designers that I have not previously uh, um, focused on, I am doing a video sort of saying, here's their designs. So Victoria Sampler fits into that category. So she is not a designer that I have previously worked on. Um, I have shown some of her stuff before. So I do have a previous finish. I've shown this before. very large. So this is Heirloom Christmas from the Victoria Sampler, which I stitched in the red and green way. There's also a more, um, I want to say it's a pink and blue version, Victorian. They call it the, Vic there's a red and, there's a red and green way and there's a Victorian way. I chose to do mine in the uh, red and green way. This is also the one that comes with a lot of good stories. Um, I did this as a class with an LNS that is no longer in existence. The class was great, made lots of good friends. We had lots of laughter in that class. Um, this is the one that I previously told the story that this is the one where the very first class I was late to. I showed up, I sat down at my table, took out my stuff and everybody looked up and went, <gasps> Like there was a noticeable intake of breath and it's because I scandalously was stitching on the knot called for fabric. So I stitched this on a, I don't know, at this point, I don't even remember if it's 28 or a 32 count water lily. I want to say it's a Jobelin. So that, anyway, water lily Jobelin of 28 or 32 count. Anyway, here it comes. Here's my previous finish. Again, this tree, very reminiscent of that wreath. It's a beast. Once you get past the tree, it's like everything's easier. See, I even kept the hearts. The candles are lovely. And as with many Victoria samplers, there's some heart anger at the bottom. So yes, I'm trying to keep the glare off of this thing, but anyway, it's, it's not a, it's not a small piece. There we go. Well, at least you can see the top. I love it. I love it. I love it. This actually stays hung up all year round. There's a little, there's a little wall space just outside of my, out of, outside of the master bedroom, uh, which is where this hangs. So quite frankly, I'm the one who sees it the most.
All right, so I've got a selection of uh, Victoria sampler charts here. Now, the funny thing is I was looking for, I have stitched this one, and I actually have a couple of other ones. I've just realized where I would have put it. Because I was looking in the, in the box where I keep the Victoria sampler charts and went, why is it not there? I know why it's not there. It's in with the kits. Anyway, so she has a series of um, little kits. They still come as kits called Beyond Cross Stitch. So very, very little... Um, what's the, the design size on this is 40 by 40. Um, the fabric that came with the kit was a 25 count Lugana. So it finished, this finished at three, 3.3 by 3.3 inches square. And really these little kits are to teach you different specialty stitches. So this one was specifically on how to do French knots. I still don't think I followed the diagram. I stitched the knots the way I know how to do them. And again, it's not all French knots. Quite frankly, the French knots are all of the berries in the corners and in the bow. So she's got a whole series of these. A lot of them are Christmas themed, but she does have other ones that are not Christmas themed. And each one is devoted only to one specialty stitch. So. Like I know that there's one where it's lazy daisies. Um, I don't remember what the other ones are. I'm pretty sure I've got like a total of four of these. Um, you know, again, just they were nice Christmas ornaments. I haven't finished them into anything. That wasn't the point. Um, so I like them as is. But if you're concerned about specialty stitches and you're wanting something more specific, the Victoria Sampler um, Beyond Cross Stitch is a really good place to start. So you can buy these as kits directly from the Victoria Sampler, and I will put a link to their website below. Um, I'll check and see if there's a specific one about that has the Beyond Cross Stitch kits. I think you can also get it just as a chart, but don't quote me on that one. This one, of course, I got from my, my local LNS, but uh, you can buy them directly from the Victoria Sampler. All right. Here we go. Here's a selection. This is not all of the ones I have. Here is a selection of the Victoria Sampler charts that I have in my stash. This one is called Autumn Romance. I know, wait, it says Autumn. And what does it say? Love is a dream that never ends. I don't know that I'm necessarily going to keep that saying. I don't know that necessarily says autumn to me. The color palette also does not say autumn to me, which is why it came home despite the name. So here is the, um, let's do this. So there is the, the specialty thread pack for this particular chart. Again, I don't think generally anyone would look at that and go, ooh, doesn't that scream autumn? I think it's actually a very springy color palette. So I don't know why, anyway. And there is, she does have four charts. There's, I'm pretty sure it's summer, there's a summer romance. I don't know if it's spring romance, but there is a series. And if you go onto the website, it shows you all four of them. I'm just bracing myself because look, there's another dreaded wreath. So I know what to do with that one. Um, so I like the color palette for this. Again, I don't know that I will necessarily do it on white, which I think is antique white is the called for, but I have that one. I do want to talk a little bit about these fiber packs that I am going to show you. Um, so Victoria Sampler is in semi-retirement, um, which has sort of been occurring sort of, I'd say over the past year, they've been moving towards semi-retirement. So one of the things that they are no longer doing is making up these fiber packs. Um, so it doesn't mean that you can't get them, you know, like I'm thinking of the Stitching Corner, um, which is a new workshop near me in Cochrane. They have thread packs for some specific Victoria Sampler charts. Um, 
So it doesn't mean that you can't necessarily get them, but if you went to your local needle workshop and they didn't have it in stock, they will not be able to order that thread pack from the Victoria Sampler anymore. Now, you can still get you can still get the fibers for these things, um, you know, Karen Water Lilies, DMC Pearl Cottons, Krynic Blending Filaments, like these are not necessarily um, problems. Actually, that's not. What came in the accessory pack? The Water Lilies Pistachio Nut, the White Pearls, and the Mauve Flower Thread. The Flower Thread's gonna be a little harder to get. Everything else is standard. They have also, because they've acknowledged that if people are having to kit them, this themselves up, some of their charts are very silk intensive, and you'll see that in a bit, and it will be more expensive to kit that up. So they have on their website come up with a conversion chart for you for the colors that they have used in their charts to convert from the silks to a DMC equivalent. So if you see one and you go like, oh my goodness, it's like 47 different kinds of silk in five different brands and there's no way I can afford that. Don't still get the chart because on the Victoria Sampler website there is a conversion chart so you can convert it into DMCs. Quite frankly, a lot of the colors that they use in their silks are solid. So it will look just the same using a solid as it will using this, the silks for a lot of it, a lot of them. Not all of them. This clearly is an example of one where it won't because the pistachio, the water lilies pistachio is the one that's giving sort of these butterflies, they might be hearts, you know, this banding here, that's what it's going to give that tonality because you are using a variegated. So that's an example where I, I wouldn't necessarily convert that to a solid, but you could probably convert it just by going from the color to a cotton variegated as opposed to needing a silk variegated. The benefit of when they were doing these silk packs is that they would give you enough to do your sampler and quite frankly, a generous amount. I don't know that you could necessarily get two of them done, but you certainly had more than enough to do one of these ones. So this one again, so two threads plus the, plus the white beads. Sorry for the reflection, but it's sunny. Slurpy weather. <clears throat> anyway, it'll be fine. Okay, so that's the autumn romance. She also did a series of bell, birthday bell pulls. And I got sucked into this because I knew a lady who was doing them all and they looked lovely. So here is um, four per chart. I'm starting from January, although it's bell pull number two. But that's January through April. May through uh, August. And September through December. And they are they are really lovely stitched up. Yeah. So I got them all. Again, these also, when I got them, see, it's on sale, um, they, I got the thread packs as well. So I have the thread packs for these as well. But again, these are ones where I wouldn't get concerned. Like if you buy the chart and you can't get the thread pack, don't worry about it. Because quite frankly, Krynik number no. 4 Braden 102 Vatican Gold still available. DMC Flosses all available DMC Pearl Cotton in white, <laughs> easy. Um, Krynik number no. four braid in one high luster. So all of those, like that's the April one, all still readily available. And I think a lot of this really were, yeah, I'm looking at this first one going, it's pretty much all DMC floss plus some Krynik. So totally fine. They also showed on the back um, she did a series of needle rolls, monthly needle rolls as well. Hmm. Oh, birthday needle roll kits. I'm just actually having a look saying, huh? I think they're actually just, it's an outtake of these. 
I'll have to look at that a little more closely. But anyway, so there's needle roll. I don't know if the kits are still available or not, but there are um, all the birthday bell pulls. She also did an entire alphabet series. Um, so I have S for Stitcher. I contemplated doing all of them. I've talked myself out of that. And again, um, the, the intention behind these is that the specialty stitches that were being used in for the letter were started with that letter. So that the specialty stitches being used for the letter S were S. Specialty stitches that started with S. So for example, uh, Smyrna stitches, spring stitch, um, scallop stitch, seven stitch, serpentine, hem stitch, Scottish, Scottish stitch, sprat's head, sheaf filling, Sienese stitch, shell stitch, uh, satin stitch, star filling stitch, sham, hen, sham hem stitch, swallow cross stitch, shadow stitch, star darn stitch, spotch stitch, and sorbello stitch. Oh, and more. Anyway, so that was the theme. And again, so similar to the drawn thread one, whichever letter you chose, um, you got specialty stitches in that. And of course, when I look for it, I can't find the diagram. But so you can see, like she had a whole diagram as to how to get all of the letters put together. Anyway, I'm not going to do the whole alphabet. I'm telling you right now. All right. The next one I'm going to show is, so this is the Easter egg hunt sampler. It's because I'm saving the Christmas ones for last or later. <laughs> um, she's got a whole bunch that are based on themes. So like there's a Halloween one. Uh, there's this Easter one, there is ones with stitching ladies, and really it's just scenes. All right, so you've got the house, the house and the church, the cat, the beehive, floral, um, the bunny trolloping through and putting the eggs out, the kids looking for the eggs, etc., etc. So the style-wise, they're all very similar to each other with different themes. And quite frankly, if you ever, you know, once you see them, this is another example of a designer where you go, once you've seen one, you can readily pick out um, a Victoria sampler chart. Um, this one, I didn't pull out all the thread packs. Oh, hang on. Oh, I didn't pull up the one for this one, but okay, we'll go back. So this is like, so I, I do have the thread pack for S is for stitcher, you know, so that's one where it's got a bunch of Krynik Mori silks, but again, as you can tell, generally they are solid silks. Um, there is uh, an over dyed cotton, one Gloriana. Nope, two Glorianas, three, four Glorianas. Anyway, so I've got the thread pack for that. Um, should have paid attention when I was putting this together. I swear I pulled out the Easter one, but apparently I didn't. Uh, this is the September bell pull, which again, it's funny. I, I got them because they were available. Yes, I've got a, a thread pack that has a bunch of DMC floss, Krynik number four braid, and some pearl cottons. You know, did I really need to get the accessory pack? No, not necessarily, but I got them all. Quite frankly, looking looking at the cost of that accessory pack, it would have been cheaper if I had just bought the stuff, but that's okay. I have them all. Uh, this is the Noel Biscornu. I love the concept. I'm feeling this might move up in the uh, stitching order because of course, 
now I know that I can do a Biscornu. Okay. She did a series of um, charts that are all, so you could make a gingerbread village that was all stitched. So the one I'm going to start off with is the Needle Workshop. This is number seven. So yes, clearly this is uh, Christmas themed. I can tell you right now the color for this roof has been discontinued, but I totally stumbled onto a huge piece of this color, <laughs> of that color linen, bought it all. Anyway, um, anyway, so it's, there are instructions in here on how to make all of this, right? clearly a ridiculous number of pins and blah, 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 and placements and how to stitch it up. So all of the instructions are in here. This is just going to give you a, what the other sides look like. So this is where we started the front, but that's what the other four sides look like. Lovely, lovely. I need to look at my things to see which one. Yes. I've got the thread pack for this. So that's what that looks like more specifically because it has all of the beads and charms and all that kind of stuff. So those ones that are heavily button charmed up, like there's a Halloween one specifically that has like a huge number of buttons on it. And now that you can no longer get these packs, it's not that you can't necessarily get those buttons anymore but you're going to have to do the hunting and find all the different sources on how to get them. Can you replace them? Absolutely. 27 ways around it for sure. Um, but yes, I got that one. Am I going to do it necessarily so that it looks gingerbready? Probably not. It might turn out to be the, gin the gingerbread uh, village that looks a little gray no less of a good thing but anyway I don't have all of I don't have all of them and again I'm pretty sure on their website they've got like that category so you can see all of the ones that fit into this so um, the needle workshop is part seven this is the cottage and candy cane pin keep which is part four This is part three, which is the gingerbread village. And again, the reason why I bought that really big piece of fabric is I really think that the, the roof for both the needle workshop and the church might end up being the same. Could be black. Stay tuned. Who knows? <laughs> I'll need to sort out how many I have and how much of that fabric I actually have and split it up. All right, this is the Sweet Pea Gazebo, which looks lovely. I'm gonna put this off for quite some time. I love the concept. I love how it looks. I love Sweet Peas. I wanna do it. It's a little bit worrisome to me. Uh, so I have the thread pack for this as well. So here's my thread pack. The thing that puts me off on this is the ribbon. I did ribbon on the that Christmas one and wasn't didn't necessarily love it, but maybe I've grown as a stitcher and it won't be quite so bad this time around um, because of course the ribbon is used heavily to make this entire arch in the gazebo. I mean, it'll look lovely when it's done. It'll just freak me out while I'm working on it. So it's a little further down in the list. I probably need to find something that is uses ribbon that's smaller than this that I care less about because I love that one so that I can do something and hopefully improve my skills before I get there. This is Butterfly Garden and I'm laughing because I didn't pull out the thread pack for this but I do have it. And again, so You've got this piece, you know, framed, bell pull, but they have a secondary part. Um, so you can do a little 
pin cushion pillow thing. Um, yes, and you with the kit, with this particular chart, when you bought the thread pack, you got the one butterfly. So in this case, they haven't used it anywhere on here. They've put it at the top of the bell pole. They've, they've put it here in the center of this one. You only get one of those charms. I'm looking at skin saying, yeah, no, all of those butterflies are stitched. So yeah. Anyway, I have that one. Okay. This is the Mystic Christmas Sampler. Now, this is, I call this the I Saw Three Ships Come Sailing In Sampler. They call it the Mystic Sampler. This is going to take some work. So the words that they have used in this particular sampler are um, a previous version. She, um, she talks about it. The verse. Ah. The earliest printed version of I saw three ships. That's the words that they've used on this. Now these words don't resonate with me because I can assure you I've never sung I saw three ships using the earliest printed version of that particular carol. So my plan is I am going to come in and rechart these words so that it actually is the words to the version of I saw three ships um, that I know. So again this is a little further down on the list because I means I have to do a lot of work to rechart that but I think it will be lovely I mean it's Christmassy and on blue it's Christmassy and on blue because it comes with a Christmas carol that's why it works that way that's why blue doesn't work for white Christmas because I know there's one person out there who is going to come back at me <laughs> that's why it's Christmas carol related anyway it will be lovely and I have the thread pack for that as well And again, to me, this is just another example. I'm really glad that I bought the thread packs as I was going along. Because um, if I wanted to get a thread pack now, it, it would be harder to source for a variety of reasons. It doesn't mean I can't do it, but I'm glad that I got it when I did. And the last one, which is probably the one I really want to start on next, is the Heirloom Nativity Sampler. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a companion piece to the Heirloom Christmas one. So they do have a, a whole Heirloom series. Just looking at the back of this one. Anyway, so this is the one I wanna do next. Well, sort of next. It's like, yes, I started White Christmas, so that took precedence over this and, and going, there's actually three other charts that are already worked into the five-year plan that take precedence over this. And it's true, they do take precedence over this. So this is the fourth one I want to start. Anyway, who was, somebody's been working on this. Is it, it might even be Sarah the Stitching Mommy. She's been working on it. Like, I think she's all the way, I think she's down to here. I think she just has the hard danger piece left to do. It looks lovely, lovely, lovely. The angels, the shepherds, the wise men, and the manger scene. It will be lovely. And I have the thread pack for that as well. Yeah. Complete with the beads and the buttons. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Now, there are some, um, I've talked about, I was talking about this last year. Last year they were running a stitch along that was free in the Facebook group. And you could only get it in the Facebook group. It was free. I downloaded it all. If you want to see what it looks like, Sarah the Stitch and Mommy is working on it this, this year. She's using it as, as one of her travel pieces. She's making great progress on it. So go check her out if you want to see what that looks like. Um, those charts are now available as paid charts directly from the Victoria Sampler website. This is just a reminder. When you see something that's free and you like it, download it. When you see it, 
because it may not always be available as a free chart. And that's one of the examples. It was free for all of last year. Once we hit December 31st, it all came off of the website and is now on the Victoria Sampler. I don't think each of the parts are necessarily very expensive, but anything is more than the free, right? Anyway, so I downloaded it all. I don't know when I'm stitching it, but I've got it all. Um, she also ran one. Um, so there are free charts within the Facebook group. They're not always available. She had a free one that she was doing that ran between January and April. I downloaded that one. That one has come off. She is now running another one, which I have to go in and get that one. I think it's May. I want to say, I can't remember if it's May to October or May till the end of the year. Don't remember that one, but I need to go in and get myself updated on that one. So if you're looking for free Victoria sampler charts, they are available in the Facebook group. There might be a couple on the website, I don't know. But the ones that I'm seeing regularly that I'm, I'm downloading are the ones that are coming out of the Facebook group. All right. Oh yeah, there we go. I knew I had the Biscornu pack. There we go. Doesn't that lo be, lo won't that be lovely? Ooh, Nefertiti, oh, I see it right there, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, distracted. Anyway, so that is the Victoria Sampler. Um, it's interesting because I have seen, I have heard some other floss tubers where they go, they're really outdated, they show their age. I don't think they do. Now, whether it's because I'm showing my age as a stitcher, I don't care. The answer is I I find them very appealing. I think they're very classic designs. I can assure you that nobody has ever looked at my heirloom Christmas sampler and went, wow, that looks really dated. Usually anybody who spots it goes like, they actually get quite immersed in going like, wow, look at all of that detail. Um, so. You know, some people look at them and they go, they're too dated, they're too old, they're too blah, blah, blah. I don't think they are. The ones that I have in my stash are just as appealing to me today as they were, okay, let's do White Christmas 30 years ago, although I'm quite sure I didn't buy that chart 30 years ago. But anyway, <laughs> that chart's been out for 30 years. I'm stitching it here in 2022. I think it's just as appealing today as it is then. Now I am doing it on a different fabric. Maybe that's someone would look at that and go, that's updating it. Who knows? Um, but the design still appeals to me. I generally appreciate doing all the specialty stitches. Again, it's um, there's generally really good stitch diagrams. And I say to anybody at any time, don't be afraid of specialty stitches. Because if you can do a connect the dot puzzle in a kid's book, you can do specialty stitches because you just do the same thing. If you're going to work on Heirloom Christmas, it will be well worth it in the end. You'll love it in the end. Getting past that tree is going to try your patience. And I remember very specifically when we did that, that was my goal. I spent January stitching that dumb tree. And that was one where I, I honestly said to myself, you just need to sit down and finish this. Because as soon as I finished it, everything else was easy. Okay, other than one, I was struggling with one, one band it erupted into a whole set of hilarity because everybody else thought it was totally easy to do, but for some reason my brain could barely wrap its mind around it. I got it done. I got it done in the end, but there was a lot of laughter as I'm like, I don't understand. I'm sorry, what? Huh? Where? Huh? It does what? I put my needle where? <laughs> anyway. A lot of hilarity, the people who were in that class remember it vividly because it got to the point where everybody who was there was going like, what is going on? And I think everybody came and, came and had a good little chuckle at my struggle. But I got it done in the end and it looks totally fine and it's framed and on my wall all year round and I love it. So that is my uh, Victoria Sampler talk for today. Um, charts are available. Um, you can get them, um, so vi the Victoria Sampler is out of Canada. Your LNS can order them in if you are looking for a paper copy. You can order the paper copy directly from the Victoria Sampler, but the Victoria Sampler can also send you a PDF of these charts as well. Save on the international shipping, you know I'm all about that. So 
I'm going to try to get several of those links. Um, certainly the link to the main page for the Victoria Sampler is going to be there. I'll get the links to the other ones. You'll see that when the notes go up. But with that, let's talk plans. Uh, so I briefly mentioned, um, so I've got plans for sampler stitches. I've got some specific plans on how far I need to get this week on White Christmas. Once I get those two goals accomplished, then I'm stitching on the cottage like a bear. According to Markup RxP, it's going to take me till July 25th to get that dumb cottage done. So I need to shake a leg and get moving on that thing. Because, yes, I'm starting later, but it cannot take me until July 25th to get that done. That will be a bad month. Um, so finish O. Get There's a specific number of bands that I want accomplished on White Crisps before I can move on to the cottage. Get a chunk done on the cottage. And if I get far enough done on the cottage, then I may have a little bit of a window left to work on my stitch con and sal. Those are my plans for this week. I've been looking at my five-year plan. The funny thing is I think everything in 2024 is being moved to 2027. Because 2026, I think, is going to get moved up to 2024. I have a new plan for 2026, which is why 2024 needs to go to 2027. <laughs> I do have moments where I go, like, it's a little bit weird going. 2027, I have a stitching plan out to 2027. It's a little bit weird. I need to stop shopping because I have stash beyond life, expen beyond life expectancy, which the acronym for that is SABLE doesn't matter. Sometimes I just enjoy looking at the charts. Like even looking through my stuff, my Victoria sampler charts to pull these ones out. I was like, oh, I want to stitch that one. Oh, I want to stitch that one. Oh, I want to stitch that one. But I want to stitch the other 400 charts as well. That's where the problem comes in. Anyway, so those are my plans for this week. Hopefully this one's going to upload faster. Here comes the YouTube story. So yes, me and the videos were fought a lot. That bonus one took forever to get uploaded. Uh, the biggest problem was this when I was just about ready to hit, uh, like get it finished so that it could get uploading. It suddenly went from an hour and 29 minutes down to 42. Yeah, problem, problem. Anyway, I've learned a lot of different things. Um, I've had copyright claims on that video for the music, which is interesting. They, as far as I know, I need to go. There were two copyright claims. I know for sure one has been dismissed. We'll wait and see what the other one says. Again, it makes technically it makes no difference to me. Um, the copyright claim means that they have uh, a right to the advertising revenue from my channel, but I haven't monetized my channel, so they have this whole thing saying like, your monetized funds will blah blah blah. I'm like, well, I don't have any monetized funds. The advertising that is on my channel is actually from courtesy of YouTube itself. Anyway, but whatever, big long story, problem. Fought with the video, fought with YouTube, fought with anyway, blah, blah, blah. Hopefully this week everything's going to go much smoother and faster. Although I will be distracted because uh, I will, as soon as it gets uploading, I'm out onto the balcony. And when I come in for supper is anybody's guess. And with that, I'm going to wrap this video up. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. Um, when in doubt, like, subscribe. If you have any comments, questions, or uh, topics you, you would like me to address, or any of that kind of stuff, feel free to throw them down in the comment section down below because I always love having the conversation. Quick little reminder for those in the Calgary area, the next stitching get together is Saturday, July the 23rd at the Signal Hill Library from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Uh, those details, including the address, are in the notes section below. If you're around, I look forward to seeing you. With that, I hope everybody is staying safe. Safety first, safety first, safety first. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope that you're finding some time to do your stitching and that your stitching is bringing you enjoyment. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care, guys.